Hi everybody, this is Mr. Fowley, and welcome to Podcast 1.4, where we're going to talk about fission, fusion, use of radioactivity, half-life, and a little bit of spectra. So let's go ahead and get started, all you suckers. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Nuclear fission. Split a heavy nucleus into two or more lighter nuclei and some number of neutrons by shooting a neutron. So notice here I've got a reactant nuclei, added a neutron. Reactant nuclei, added a neutron. Reactant nuclei, added a neutron. Okay. This is my biggest nucleus, 235, is the biggest mass, 92. Notice how these two are both smaller than 235. Okay. Also notice you get some neutrons that kick out. The re you don't have to know exactly which one, but you have to be able to identify it because they're smaller. This is my biggest nucleus. These guys are smaller. What do I mean by smaller? See 235? 235 is bigger than 90. 90 is smaller than 235. 143 is smaller than 235. So that's what I mean by smaller. So you just need to know you're going to start with a neutron and end with a neutron. Or a number of neutrons. Fusion reactions. Oh, wait, let me just go back to that again. Split is fission. You split it by shooting a neutron splits into smaller things. Fission is split. Fusion means coming together. Okay, Combination of light nuclei to form heavier nuclei. So notice my biggest one here is a 1. Look, 4 is bigger than 1. That's fusion. So notice we start with small and with big. Small, small, bigger. Small, medium, uh, 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 bigger. Small, medium, bigger. So fusion makes it bigger. Okay. Uh, major fusion reaction occurs continuously in the sun and other stars. I'm going to tell you why fusion is harder. Fusion is easy to start, but fusion is tough to start. Shoot a neutron at a nucleus. So a neutron, neutral. A neutron at a positive nucleus, and there's no repulsion. Shoot a positive nucleus at another positive nucleus, they repel. Like having Connor and Caitlin be lab partners. Now that's a special tribute um, to someone from a long time ago, a former student whose brother is now in the class. Um, there are two people that fought all the time. They could never be together. But remember, like charges repel. Like repels. So positive, put it next to another positive, they're going to repel and shoot away. Positive, put it next to a negative, and those would attract. Okay? Opposites attract, like charges repel. It's not just true in love, it's true in chemistry, which is love. There are a handful of uses of nuclear um, chemistry. Um, there's power, so there's, oops. So medical uses, meaning for your health, power generation of plutonium-238 is used to power pacemakers. You don't need to know it's specifically 238, but a pacemaker is the battery um, for a heartbeat, basically. So some people's hearts don't, you get your little heart, it doesn't really look like that, but it needs a little pulse that says, hey, beat. Hey, beat, hey, beat, hey, beat, hey, beat, hey, beat, hey, beat, hey, beat. And then what would happen when that battery dies? Your heart doesn't beat and you die. So, aww. Medical tracers, I have a nice picture of that later on. So, uh, medical, oh, that's not quite the tracer I wanted to. Oh, well, that's all right. So you can use tracers. You can use radioactive things as tracers like this. Another medical application is positron emission topography. That is a PET scan. Ah, oh, come back. A PET scan detects abnormalities in living tissues without disrupting the tissue. So, for example, this might be a healthy brain, okay? And this one might be a less than healthy brain, okay? Stars also generate spectra. So this is kind of changing a little bit. So stars, remember, there's nuclear energy, right? The nuclear energy in stars and all stars generate spectra we can use to identify the elements, okay? So black body radiation, this would be, for example, the star, okay? So black body radiation, some of it goes through the clouds and goes to our eyes. 
this person will see an absorption spectrum of the gas. Okay. The person viewing directly will see a continuous spectrum. This person will see the emission spectrum if it goes from the cloud and kicking back out. Okay. So an absorption spectrum tells you what's absorbed, and we'll see some pictures of this, and you want to draw something like this. So you, if I were to draw this by my hand, I would say, now this is weird that I have it kind of backwards. You know how it's Roy G. Biv? Roy G. Biv. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. This is most energy. Okay. An absorption spectrum, notice how some of the stuff gets absorbed. So if I hop back here, this person will see an absorption spectrum because this cloud absorbs oops, some light. Okay, Which light? Well, it depends on what is there. This one, the cloud absorbs it, and sometimes the cloud emits it back. Isn't it weird how clouds can kind of do both? So in this case, this is the absorption spectrum. This would be the emission spectrum. See how they complement each other? Okay. So if this is the, just an example of how this could be helpful. Do you see how we can see this is hydrogen? It has this exact barcode. So this is hydrogen's barcode. This is helium's barcode. Notice it's different. Some lines are the same, but it's different. Neon has an entirely different barcode. Sodium has, oh, sodium has something in common with neon, but if you see all of these lines on here, it's an identifier just like a barcode identifies, you know, what brand of cookies you like. Helper, that's a hint. Oh, I didn't mean to put this in here. No, oh, that one snuck in there. Cancer treatment is another medical one. Apparently, I put these in the wrong spot. Another medical use of nuclear. I'm sorry, that's messed up. Um, cancer cells are uncontrolled growth. And uncontrolled growth needs extra nutrients. So if we send radioactive nutrients that destroy the DNA, that will kill the cancer before you kill the patient. So what happens is when you, oops, when cells are dividing, you know how we have the DNA? Well, I guess it's more like this. Ooh, uh, ooh, look at my DNA stuff. There's your DNA. When you, um, when your cells divide, they separate. And when they separate, radioactivity can kill them. Okay, so cancer cells, you need to know that we send radioactive nutrients to that destroy DNA. And I'm going to add the word replicating DNA. Now remember, all of your cells are dividing sometime or another, right? So the ones that are dividing the fastest are damaged most. Engineering um, is thickness control and leak detection. So if I have something that is supposed to be a solid barrier, right, but it's got a hole in it, and here, let's say it's a pipe, okay? And I've got stuff I'm flowing through here. Well, if I don't know where, say it's way underground, I don't know where um, this leak is happening, I don't want to have to dig up the whole pipe. So I put something radioactive in here, and the radioactivity thing that leaks out of here will go click, 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 click. And then the dude checking it, or lady checking it, will say click, 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 click. Oh, it must be right down here. And it helps you do that. Um, I hope you know that nuclear power um, can be used for power generation and for um, nuclear bombs. Archaeological. Living things have the same ratio of carbon-14 as the atmosphere. Dead things lose their um, carbon-14 in a half-life manner. So this is a newer way of calculating it. So atoms decay but not at a constant rate. So this is a calculation. This is a big deal here. Half the atoms decay during every time period. So this is just an exercise in basic times in and divides in, and really it's probably just divides in. So see how, let's say something that has a half has a half life of one hour. If I have 100% of it, in one hour I will have 50% of it. In two hours, another half life, right? I would have 25. In three hours would be that. Now, this doesn't have to be one hour. It could be um, 17 minutes, and then this would be 34 minutes, another 17 minutes, and then so on. So let's do some samples. An isotope rate of radon has a half-life of 36 minutes. What fraction of the original quantity of, actini oops, sorry, of radon remains after 360 minutes? 
So I'm looking for a fraction. So I start off with a whole. So I'm going to have time, and I'm going to have amount. I'm just going to make a happy little table here, right? At time zero, I have one. At time, we're going to count our half-lives. 36 minutes, I'm going to have a half. 72 minutes, I'm going to have a fourth. See how each time I'm dividing by half? Um, and I admit, I'm going to go um, 108. I'm going to have 1 eighth. 144. I'm going to have 1 sixteenth. See how I keep dividing by 2? At 180, I'm going to have 1 32nd. I'm just adding 36 here. Add 36, divide by half. At 216, I'd have 1 64th. And, well, made epic a long one. 252, I'd have 1 128th. I'm going to continue it over here. And after 288, I'm going to have time amount. I'm going to have 256. Whoops, 1 over 256. After 324, I'm going to have 1 over 512. And after 360, finally, I'm going to have 1 over 1024. So again, what did I do here? Add 36. And what did I do here? Divide by 2. Okay? Now that took a long time, right? So what I really did was I took my ratio, and can you tell that I would have 10 half-lives? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I have 10 half-lives, what I did was I did 1 over 2 to the 10th. So if I did that in my calculator, 1 divided by quantity, 2 raised to the 10th, close quantity, and I get that same number. Okay? It, this gave me the decimal form, but it's the same thing. Okay? So if I want to figure out how many half-lives are in 1,080, 1,080, whoops, divided by 36, 1080 divided by 36 is 30 half-lives. Okay? So that means my answer is going to be 1 over 2 to the 30th. Now on that one, I don't know, I put it in parentheses, but 1 divided by 2 to the 30th, whoops, I put 32nd. I'm going to give that a decimal one, and I get 9.31e negative 10, you know, is the number, okay? I know it says fraction, but that's it. After 26 days, radioactive material is found to have 1 16th its original activity. What is the half-life present in the material? So the most typical one is time and amount. After 26 days, it's found to have 1 16th. So at time 0, the amount is 1. Uh, it's going to be a half, a fourth, an eighth, and a sixteenth. Okay? What is the half-life? So that means here's, this took 26 minutes, 26 days, right? So that means I had one, two, three, four half-lives. Whoa! I had four half-lives. So all I do is I take 20, take 26 divided by 4. 26 divided by 4. And that is 6.5. Let's see if this works. 6.5, 13, 19.5. Hey, look, 26. That worked. OK? So that was glorious. Review. Fission is splitting. Fusion is sticking. And radioactivity has many specific uses to know. Half-life calculations are fun. And to that, I will say doodles.